بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Okay so here we'll try to uh, document a lab on the VLANs so initially we'll start with the VLANs and then we'll move on with the trunking concepts so in this case here so I'll try to configure a specific ports in the VLAN like these two ports in the VLAN 10 and then these two ports in the VLAN 20 and we'll also assign the IPs to those uh, subnets like I'll be using 182.168.1. subnet here and then 182.168.2. subnet on on the other side a similar way we'll do the similar thing on the switch to as well now again as we already did the same lab with uh, with GNS uh, with a packet tracer uh, I would like to implement the similar kind of lab in the GNS3 as well now again in the GNS3 if you want to uh, simulate this lab there are multiple ways you can actually do multiple images you can use uh, let me show you the options but I'll be preferring the IVU option so one of the option is you can just drag and drop an IVS router like I can simply go and add the IVS router where you can just run the IVS on the local router this is one of the option to run the switching labs inside the GNS3 and you can use any of this uh, image like I'm using 3725 image or any of the image you can use you can give some name and while you are uh, selecting you need to select 16 ew now these are the switch switch ports we can use and whatever the other ports we are using these are the router ports like this is a normal layer 3 ethernet router port and then four serial ports if i'm using this 16 esw this is a module to connect uh, switch ports so i can use these ports uh, one interface is not required for switching and then click on next and then finish so whenever I'm, I'm selecting this particular device now if you see here uh, these are the specific vpcs or the computers i would like to connect now i can simply use the ports on the slot one now if you see this f f1 by zero f1 by one and it goes up to 16 actually it's 15 0 to 15. now these are my layer two ports which means i can simply go and connect them and I can con now I should not use this port and you can see here F0 by 0 and F0 by 1 these are the two ports which are the layer 3 ports the router ports where you have to assign the IP addresses but whereas this F1 the slot 1 the 16 port which we selected that that is going to be a layer layer 2 port which can be used for the VLAN and other configuration so this is one uh, specific option we can use that's something uh, we'll be doing here so if you want to uh, simulate the labs we can use the iOS uh, switch as i said iOS device the iOS device the good thing about the iOS is you don't need to run this gns3 vm this is not required and of course it uses lesser cpu resources compared to the other devices but again the drawback or the limitation is so it is this is uh, typically restricted to very basic kind of scenarios like the vlans and the trunking and you can verify some few stps but again if you are moving on to the advanced uh, configurations like mstp which we are going to cover a little bit later the challenge will come is the challenge will be like uh, setting up the labs and there will be a few command differences as well uh, one of the command difference here will be like if i go back to this one and quickly show you the option here uh, we can go to the console now this is the console screen now if you see the default it shows as a router we can change that particular uh, to switch as well so i can go ahead and change the host name to switch one and if you go ahead and verify show ip interface brief uh, when you say show ip interface brief you will see the ports uh, listed from slot one Again, you can see it starts with zero, so that basically goes up to 15, uh, zero to 15, that is total 16 ports. Now, these are the specific ports we can use. Now, if you are trying to create a VLAN, normally we create the VLAN like this, uh, name and then sales, that's how it is. So, uh, again, uh, the issue is uh, now you cannot go with this kind of configuration. So, probably here you have to use the VLAN database command 
and then you have to create the VLAN, and then that's how that's how you basically do it. So there's a slight difference in the things here. A few adjustments you can say, like the VLAN 10, the name says, and you need to exit this command. Exit. And again, you can see it says there is a not enough space. So sometimes, you know, some images, it may not work. This is again the issue with this image. Probably you can restart or try a different image uh, in general. So again, as I said, the limitation with this iOS image is you can only do the basic kind of stuff uh, with that particular port. Uh, probably a not recommended option for simple basic VLANs. You can still use them, but I don't really use the option. As I said, a packet tracer is always the best option for most of the switching labs, except few advanced labs like MSTP or uh, VRRP, these kind of things. You generally don't go with that. So uh, for most of these basic level labs, packet tracer is very good for VLANs, trunking, STP. Like most of the uh, workbooks, if you see the videos, if you refer probably, I have used a packet tracer for most of the labs. Again, I'm trying to show you a few other options as well. Now, the second thing is you can go with this option. As I said, there is a limitation. And the third option, as I said, you can use the IOU image or IOL image. And the fourth option is the IOSV image. Now, the IOU image, uh, if you want to run this too, you need to have this GNS3 VM. Of course, uh, must be running on the back end. You must have this option. Okay. So if you are going with the IWS U image, you need to have this GNS3 VM uh, must be running. Okay. So this GNS3 VM must be running in the back end here. So if you are going with uh, these options, especially in the GNS3, you need to have this GNS3 VM running in the back end. And of course, you can also use the alternative, as I said, the alternative can be EVNG. Uh, probably this is kind of an overview of what are the options for the switching labs and the same options this is the same three options you can you can say more applicable to EVNG as well because at the end the back end it's the same image it runs the only difference is the interface which we use will be uh, different here now again if you're using IOU or IOL you need to have this GNS3 VM uh, running here and you need to add the image of course we did that already well, we know how to do that you need to add from iv devices add a new option and then make sure that you select the image i'm not going to do this because it's already done uh, you can see here it's already there uh, here actually this one this is the image here which is already running and i, I don't think so no this is actually the image this one if you see the configuration here this is running the iou or iol image which is already set and you can see the number of interfaces here. Now, again, how to do, we already covered. If you want to add the IOU images, as I said, you need to go to the IOU and then add the image and upload the image. Uh, make sure that you're running this on the GNS3 VM. And then you can just use some name and select this image. And of course, you can, you can you need to also add the source code here. The source code also need to add. I'm not doing this because already I have this drag and drop already here. Now, the good thing about this one is uh, if I am going with an IOU, uh, it is quicker, uh, faster, uses lesser CPU resources compared to this one. So if you compare these two, one of the major uh, difference is the CPU resources will be high and the memory resources will be high here, uh, somewhat low compared to IOL. And again, if you compare this in terms of ports, like in IOU or IOL, you get only Ethernet ports, like E0 by 0, E0 by 1. But whereas you get G0 by 1, G0 by 2, like that, a more kind of a physical a switch kind of ports. The gig ports, you will find that's the difference. Like here, you can see I have selected four modules. So it will say show IP interface brief. You can see the ports will be a group of four. Uh, Ethernet slot 0, E0, E1, E2, E3. 0 by 1, and then E1 by 1, E1 by 0, E1 by 1, like that, up to 3, and then E2, and then E3. Okay, so most of the uh, layer 3, layer 2 images, this is actually a layer 2 image, which I'm setting up. Uh, this is how it looks. Uh, but in terms of uh, process, you can see it's much better. 
The other option, I guess, said you can use the IWS V image. Now, IWS V, this is the IWS V image. And how you do that, again, the same. If you refer already, we, we discussed separately this one. So if we're going with IWS V image, you need to go and download the appliance file. And you need to click on import appliance. And you can see this is called IWS V. Uh, this appliance file you have to download from the GNS3 website and then select and upload the image. You can see here already I have the specific images. You can click on import and upload the image. I'm not doing that again. As I said, it's already uh, covered separately. But again, if you see, this is my IOU image, which I already added here. And you can see I'm selecting 20 ports. I can add 21. And it's using this image. This is the IOS V image from uh, Cisco, which is added here. So I just start this one and will console. Now again, if you see the console, uh, the booting up will be a little bit slower and as well as the interface will be much slower compared to the IOS V. That's a kind of a difference you will find uh, between these two. So mostly, as I said, I will be uh, preferring this IOU kind of image for switching labs because I have been using this IWS V as well. Uh, so if you have a good RAM, uh, good memory capabilities, you can also go with IWS V. But again, if you see adding, you know, eight to 10 switches in our uh, mock labs, some, some advanced scenarios, it will increase the CPU utilization. So at the end, the CLI uh, point of view, there won't be any difference between these two, like the IWU, IWU or IOL or the IWS V. But again, as I said, uh, preferable you you need to know all the options so probably what i suggest you need to have the different options to know uh, setting up but at then you will be using a specific image for specific labs depending upon the requirement and depending upon how how it works normally okay so you can see it's uh, still booting up uh, it takes some time to come up and hopefully uh, once this come up i can issue the commands the IOU meantime will verify if you say show VLAN, you can see uh, by default, there's only one VLAN and you can see all the ports in the VLAN one. So there's no difference in the command line. And if you are trying to create a uh, specific VLANs, the same way we do it, there's no difference uh, in terms of CLI. So once you go into the CLI, it doesn't make any difference whether you are using an IOU image or whether you are using an IOS V image or whether you're using a packet tracer, it's the same thing. The only difference is the limitation of the commands. Uh, that's the thing. So if you're going with a packet tracer, like 70 to 80% of the labs, switching labs works fine with the packet tracer, which is a good option, especially for the switching, as I said. But again, if you're trying to integrate some routing in the switching labs, uh, probably or uh, documenting some uh, advanced like MSTP or or even there is a VRRP or HSRP, those kind of options, Packet Tracer doesn't uh, support completely. So you will be switching out with this, these things. Okay, so in order to expertise, in order to uh, get more in depth, even though it is a little bit a complex way to do the things, but if you are trying to do some more advanced labs with, a, with an advanced verifications, probably uh, I generally go with this IOU, IOU these options. So preferable, this is the one which I'm using here anyway.